संत कृपा थी सर काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए बोरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुदा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समान ते के नहीं मैं मन मा करियो विचार हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय गणेशम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Almighty, our beloved Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the pathmaker to our liberation, the one who is always constantly with us, Pujipad Guruji, Puji Rusi Swami, Puji Ranchod Bhagat, and all of you devotees, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Those who have been in the world, traveled, have heard of signs and read signs like click it or ticket, meaning if you don't wear a seatbelt, you'll get a ticket. Or you've heard of signs like don't drink and drive. Or you've even seen signs they say, that say no smoking zone or even signs like no littering, or in small letters right underneath it, $500 penalty. Catching a glimpse of such a sign transforms the actions of an individual right away. Why? Because a person doesn't want to pay $500 for just throwing a piece of garbage on the ground. If police saw this, kind of act and they were around that vicinity they would for sure give that person a penalty for five hundred dollars but instantly inside one's mind one has a fear not to pay that much money because one knows that it would be a great loss these are just rules simple rules these are rules that are based in our day-to-day -day life. There are rules which governments have which are on a higher scale, which are also rules that one abides by automatically. Sometimes one doesn't even know and one is abiding that rule. Now, rules are very important in society and they have great benefits. First and foremost, they keep us safe. Any kind of rule, any kind of rule in the government system, any kind of rule in your local community, any kind of rule in your school, any kind of rule at all, which is established by a legitimate organization, they're all beneficial to you. They're, it's not going to hurt you in any way. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is it keeps other people safe. For example, <clears throat> the rule of not drinking and driving. Well, if you did drink and then drive and get into an accident, it might have not hurt you, but maybe it had killed the person who's the opposite victim in that accident. That person is completely innocent, but due to your mistake, that person had to suffer. So, regarding that point, rules also keep others safe. And the third beneficial factor for rules is that Boundaries for humans is a very good thing. Let me give you an example. Animals. Let's take the particular animal of a lion. Now, lion, what it eats is other creatures or 
you can say other animals such as deer, fox, meaning it eats meat. It's never going to eat grass. You'll never see a lion eating grass or any kind of vegetation. Why? Because that's its, you can say, diet. Now, no one has to give it rules to abide by by saying that, hey, lion, you should only eat this. You shouldn't eat this. The lion knows that this is my law. This is my rule. This is what I have to do. So, another animal. For example, a whale. A whale in the ocean, it only eats krill. It doesn't eat other sharks. It doesn't eat any other animals or any other fishes besides krill. It's the biggest living fish you can say in the ocean yet it doesn't eat anything but very microscopic very microscopic creatures it hasn't been given a rule but it knows that this is what I can eat and this is what I cannot eat but humans humans need boundaries humans have to have some kind of written consent that you can eat this and you cannot eat that. You can do this and you cannot do that. And when that person stays inside that boundary of rules, that's the only way that person benefits. When that person comes out of that boundary, that person will suffer now, I gave you examples of rules in the world, rules that we follow. I give you examples of the benefits through animals and other creatures. But all these rules are simple and they keep us safe. But what is my subject for today? Well, just like how there's rules in society, there's also rules in our spiritual world, you can say. Rules meaning agna of Bhagwan. Agna meaning commands or rules, you can say. Commands are something that Bhagwan has established when he was on this earth 200 years ago. And a manual that he written was the Shikshapatri. Now the Shikshapatri is such kind of manual that it gives us so many rules, only particularly 212, but those rules are so beneficial to whoever follows that Bhagwan in that Shikshapatri states that whoever follows these rules will benefit in this life and the life beyond. Now, I want to just read you a couple simple verses of the Shikshapatri in English to let you know how. Verse number 11. All my followers shall never kill any living creatures under any circumstances, nor shall they kill even the smallest insects, such as lice, bugs, etc. Now, Bhagwan Swaminarayan has a non-violence philosophy, and he promotes that no living creatures, not even the smallest insect, should be killed. Well, you're probably thinking that if I step on an ant, is that really going to hurt my spiritual life? Meaning, if you step on an ant purposely, not by accident, but on purpose, you step on an ant, will it really hurt you? Well, I want you to think, if someone disturbs you in any way or someone violates your property, you're obviously going to get hurt by it. In the same manner, even if it's a small thing, 
it still is a record in Bhagwan's book. And such a record is always counted for as a crime. So that's just one rule. Another rule Bhagwan states in verse number 15, none shall ever eat meat. Now, eating meat is very common in society nowadays, but there's so many negative results. People get so many diseases, and there's so many diseases in the world due to eating meat, and they get sick, and sometimes they even die. But Bhagwan has seen this from the past. So they know, he knows that this is a wrongdoing. So he is warning his devotees not to eat meat. These are simple rules. You know, these are so simple. But on the other hand, they are so difficult for other people outside of religion to follow that there's no way they can follow these rules. But for devotees, it's easy because they know that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is Bhagwan and he has established these rules for us. So, in Gunatadan Swami's Vato, Swami says, Jikli Agna Pare, Iklu Vasna Bare. Converted into English, however much you can follow the rules of God, his great saint, that's how much your worldly desires would diminish or would be destroyed. This is a fact. About 200 years ago, there's a story of a woman. She was no ordinary woman. She was a sinner. She lived an immoral life. But one time Bhagwan went in her village of Jetalpur. Bhagwan Swamiran was holding yagnas in Jetalpur at that time. So, Bhagwan Swamiran, he gave 30 grains of wheat to each and every home to grind into flour. So from that flour, they can make food from it. So as he was giving flour to each grain, he came to the house of this woman. She was a sinner, and Bhagwan automatically sensed that she was a sinner. And she wasn't, she wasn't capable or she wasn't eligible for this kind of service. But somehow when that lady saw Bhagwan Swami Narayan, she thought that I also want to do this service of grinding these grains. So... Bhagwan knew this and he commanded her to grind the 30 kilograms of grains without any kind of other disturbance and do it do seva overnight with a pure intention to please him. So the woman took the 30 grams uh, 30 kilograms of grains to her home and all night she grinded those grains before they had to manually grind. So she grinded those grains manually until all night she did this service. And it took her all night. And in the morning, she was completed. Her hands were completely blistered because of the rigorous service. But in the morning, she took the 30 kilograms of flour now to Bhagwan. Sriji Maharaj. Bhagwan saw this, and at first, the devotees who were sitting beside her, they told Bhagwan that she has not done this service because she is an immoral person. She is a sinner. But Bhagwan knew that she had done this. So, what he told her to do was told her to show everyone her hands. The proof was she had blisters in her hands big, big blisters. So she showed her hands to all the people and everyone saw that her hands were blistered 
and yesterday there were no, there was nothing wrong with their hands so they found out she did manually do the service of grinding those grains all throughout the night just to please Bhagwan. And through following the command of Bhagwan, following the rule, the agna of Bhagwan, that you should only grind these grains, no one else should help you. You should do it by first becoming completely clean, taking a shower, putting on new clothes. She did as Bhagwan commanded. And through that, when she offered the grains, or when she offered the flour back to Bhagwan, Bhagwan became very pleased. And through that, she said, she asked Bhagwan, what will you grant me? Bhagwan said, just like how Muktan Swami will attain Kalyan, in the same way, I will offer you the same kind of Kalyan, or Kalyan in the same form. Meaning, she would be liberated, just like in the same fashion as Muktan Swami would be liberated. So, obviously, you see the benefit of following the commands of Bhagwan. Simple yet effective, but it has to be rules that are established by God or the Akantik Sad, Sad Purush. On the other hand, we see many, many people who don't follow rules. We see many people who break the rules in society. They don't care. They don't care if they have to go to jail. They don't care if they have to pay a penalty because that's just what they want to do. That's their mindset. That's their stubbornness in their mind. But even though they do as their mind wishes, in the end, they always reap. In the end, they always become miserable. And during the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, there was a devotee by the name of Virabhai from the Gam of Upleta. Now, Virabhai had horses, had property, had much land. And he did agriculture and he herded his horses. But Bhagwan Swaminarayan, when he came to his village, he informed Virabhai to sell his horses so he can get grains in exchange. Why? Because the following year, there was going to be a big drought in that region. So when there is a drought, there's going to, every, all the animals will die because of lack of water. The whole agriculture will go bad. Everything would become completely destroyed. But Virabhai, he first doubted, and then he replied to Bhagwan that I cannot sell my horses because I have a close relation with the king and the king takes my horses and takes them outside and does, you can say, a tour with my horses or goes to travel with my horses to other villages. So I have to offer my horses to the king. Bhagwan, after even commanding him a couple times, he still did not listen. So then Bhagwan went away. But the following year, a drought occurred in his village around that region, and all of his horses and all, all died. His agriculture became completely destroyed, and he had to suffer. But since he was a devotee of Bhagwan, he went to Gadpur to meet Sriji Maharaj. And there, Bhagwan himself gave him clothes, grains, because he was a devotee, so he took refuge underneath God. So due to that, he was given all this. But my main message is that Virabhai suffered because he couldn't follow the simple rule of selling his horses for grains. He couldn't, he didn't have trust in the words of Bhagwan, and due to that, he had to suffer. But students, college students, all who are watching, there are many, many rules of Bhagwan, but in the Shiksha Patri, there is just a handful of rules that one has to follow. Simple rules like not eating onion and garlic. Simple rules like not eating meat. Simple rules like not drinking alcohol or liquor or any kind of beverages. 
Such kind of rules can keep you safe, keep your parents safe, keep others safe, and also keep a boundary in your life. And due to that, Bhagwan himself promises, he states, that all who follow the rules, all who follow the Shikshapatri will benefit not only in this life, but in the life after. That's what he guarantees inside the Shikshapatri, which he wrote in Vartal around about 200 years ago. So, I highly suggest and stress that all of you abide by such kind of rules. Just think, when we see a sign in society, no smoking zone, no littering, $500 penalty, we immediately follow it. We immediately take into consideration because we're afraid of the police. But we're not afraid of God, who is the creator, destroyer, and sustainer of not only this world, but infinite worlds like this, infinite universes. Yet, we're not afraid of Him. Due to that, we continue to break His rules. But only when we realize His glory. That's the only way one will be able to follow His rules. So, regarding this lecture for today, Bhagwan's rules should be considered to be the highest form of dharma and should be considered to be the highest form of happiness. So please, Follow the commands of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Saying this, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. Now, Pujya Rushivalab Swami will give his lecture on Bhakti. Varnivesharamaniyadarsanam Mandahasarchirananambujam Ujitam suranarotamermuda Dharmananda namaham vichintai Sri Hari Krishna Maharajani jai Almighty Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swami Narayan और पूज्य गुरुजी, पूज्य भगत जी, ऑल ऑफ यू डेवोटी, जय स्वामी नारायण। We are discussing about devotion, means the bhakti and uh, its types. Nine types of devotion we know about, and now today I'm going to discuss about. Sakha Bhakti. What is the meaning of Sakha Bhakti? Sakha means the word is in Gujarati and the meaning of Sakha means a friend. So what is concern? The word friend with the devotion, Bhakti. Is there any connection? Yes. Friendship with the God is the part of devotion. But what is exactly the meaning of Sakha Bhakti? To understand real meaning of this Bhakti, just imagine in your mind. You and your friend moving around the lake, 
you don't know to swim and by mistake as you are playing with each other you are just laps your leg in the water and as you don't know the you don't know to swim so you gradually go deep and deep in the lake and your friend just run towards you and fetch you from the water and save your life then after this incident what is your feeling towards your friend before this incident your friend is just merely friend means so called friend he have no more importance but after this incident you consider your consider the same person is your best friend you may offer whatever you have even half of them to your friend ask him what is your problem take his advice give him important in all of your lives important in uh, important circumstances why because he had once save your life come back to the point bhagwan has given us this life it is not the question of saving life but in reality bhagwan has given us this life after giving this life bhagwan has given us so many things just think how many people in this world who cannot see the beauty of this world how many people in this world who cannot listen how many people in this world by birth cannot walk because they have no legs similarly there are so many deficiency in human body by birth many people have but bhagwan has given us completely working body that's why if any person even once in life just help us in any way we cannot forget that person remaining period of our life if we have no money to purchase a house and if we have no home to live in at the time if any person help us give us some money or give us any give us the shelter in his own house then even we become more wealthier than that person but still we cannot forget that people because he had once help us in the time of necessity bhagwan has given us so many things so many wealth bhagwan has given us these eyes ears speech intellect many other things bhagwan has given us but thing whether we even in a day can we able to thanks bhagwan remember even today this day how many times we can remember the form of bhagwan 
who has given us this existence we have to remember bhagwan because he is our friend he has given us so many things just consider what is the characteristic of worldly good friends two worldly friends in this world even a person cannot speak anything something secret to his father or brother but the same thing is described in front of his friend see there is no any blood relation between the relation of friendship on the other way he has a rela- bl- blood relation with his father and brother but still he cannot speak truth to his father and brother but person can speak means disclose his heart to his friend so according to these characteristics we have deep connection with friendship in the spirituality when we disclose our heart towards bhagwan we cannot keep anything secret in our heart from bhagwan from our sadguru from our santo that is what our real sakha bhakti because there is no different there is no distance in friendship means zero percent distance and if we create this zero percent distance within our relation with bhagwan and santo that will become our devotion now another point is that today everybody want to become a friend of obama everybody want to uh, want to become a friend of mr modi why because they are the great personality of this world but on other hand you just think they are the friends of all how because they rule their state or country in such a way that mass of people can get benefit means they rule their state or country in such a way that whole society can develop and that is why they are the real friends of society means all of the people but people in the mind of people they have always desire to be a friend of those great personality similarly we cannot understand but it is true that bhagwan is the friend of the soul the jeev on the other part we as a jeev or soul always desire to reach the bhagwan to become a friend of bhagwan why because because he had more power than us he had more wealth than us he has more authority than us because he is omniscient omnipotent that's why this dependent soul always try to become a friend of independent god but in reality bhagwan is the real friend of the, our our soul it is described in the upanishad 
there is a tree on the one branch of that tree there is two birds when we observe those two birds with our first view both seems the same but there is vast difference in the, between those birds what they what the birds doing on, while sitting on the branch one bird is eating a fruit while at the same time the other bird is merely watching observing the other bird who is eating the fruit the meaning of this example the bird who is eating the fruit is the soul is the jeev who is now in this birth just like the bird is eating fruit this soul this jeev is getting benefits getting happiness or misery according to his past deeds whatever happiness or misery is attained by this soul that is the fruit of his past deeds his past karmas and the other bird who is merely watching on the bird who is eating the fruit that is the super soul or the bhagwan supreme god when we doing any activity bhagwan is constantly observe our activity because he is our friend he is not far from us he is just beside us he is just next to us but we cannot see because we are engage ourselves in eating the fruit enjoying the pleasure this worldly pleasure and forgetting our best friend who is just next to us when we remember that my best friend is with me and enjoying the joy of being a having a friend with us our best friend with us and offer him our everything our happiness our misery talk to him remember him while doing any activity that is sakha bhakti if we cannot have even once read in our life the upanishad or veda but bhagwan swaminara has described same thing in the siksha patri in the 107th verse bhagwan says just as jeev is installed in our heart bhagwan the supreme god is also dwells in the heart in the jeev because bhagwan is the best friend of the of this jeev your best friend is always desire happiness of you he always work in such a way that you can be benefited he always give you instruction so that you can get tremendous profit similarly bhagwan is also a friend of this jeev and that is why whatever his instruction to us that always he was tremendous benefit but we have no trust in the words of bhagwan so we forget to follow the words of bhagwan or even accept the words of bhagwan and that's why we remain poor if our best friend 
is the president of USA and if he gives us the key of his personal treasury his personal locker and if we merely understand the key as just jack and did do not use the key how full we are similarly bhagwan is our best friend he has given us so many wealth and the key to acquire those wealth the key in the form of his various commands commands in the shiksha patri as well as in the vachana amrut but we have no trust in the words of bhagwan and that's why we forget to accept the key of his personal treasure house bhagwan has so many redemptive virtues and bhagwan wants to give those virtues to his devotee but devotee has no concentration on the words of bhagwan that's why he disobey his command violating his command in various matter various manner and due to this jeev or devotee cannot attain those virtues otherwise his best friend is ready to give him everything how our friendship bhagwan has given example of milk and water in the six vachana of the garuda last chapter when we put milk in the vessel on stove and we boil it what happen after some time when milk become very hot then what happen bhagwan has described the whole example of milk and water in detail in vachanamrit what happen just milk come out from the vessel and dissolve the gas stove so that it cannot burn the milk in fact milk is not burning but the water in the milk is burning and to save the water milk come out from the vessel to save the milk uh, save the water and w- what is water doing water himself burn to save the milk what can you understand by this example Bhagwan is ready to save us from this mundane materialistic world. He does not think for us to take again and again birth in this world. He cannot he he does not think for us that we may encounter miseries again and again. so he has given us the chance he has given us this good situation this satsang company of sadguru company of good santo bhagwan has given us the scriptures bhagwan has given us everything so that we can easily attain his divine abode but as we are not the best friend of bhagwan bhagwan is the best friend of every soul but we are not the best friend of bhagwan so we cannot use this all means to attain bhagwan to attain his abode and 
lapse this opportunity but still bhagwan is our best friend so he is try many other ways to save our soul so that to become a best friend of bhagwan what is our duty our duty is to remember remember the form of bhagwan remember his words remember his each and every command and just try to follow every command so that we can even one day in our life become a best friend of bhagwan no doubt while talking on the topic of sakha bhakti everybody talking about surakachar and brahman and swami that both are the best friend of bhagwan both have both have inclination of friendship with bhagwan but they have no merely friendship with bhagwan when at the age of 26 Surakachar called by Bhagwan to become a sadhu he immediately leave his home his property his wealth his authority everything and become a saint so if you want to become a best friend of Bhagwan we have to obey each and every words of bhagwan this is only characteristic of becoming a best friend of bhagwan not merely just talking with bhagwan that is not devotion that is not real meaning of this sakha bhakti another thing is that when bhagwan and bhagwan while staying in the sant order us to do anything at the same time we consider that command as inappropriate but still at the same time we should consider we should take in our mind we should remember in our mind gunadita nand swami ne baat swami says in his talk god is not an enemy of his devotee so whatever he does that will bring us happiness bhagwan guru ji and santo they are not our enemy they never wish any bad of us bear for us but they are always they are even in trying to do best for us so whenever they give any command at the time we should make understood our mind that bhagwan guru and santo are not my enemy they are my best friend whatever the whatever the desire for me even whatever they instruct me and if i follow their commands that will give me tremendous happiness not only in this world but also world beyond so by this understanding we can walk on this path this path of sakha bhakti we can one day become a best friend of bhagwan and when our relationship with bhagwan become firm our friendship become firm then what is the characteristic of best friend the best friends has only one soul in different bodies similarly when we attain this elevated spiritual state by this way of sakha bhakti when we become 
staunch friend, firm friend, best friend of Bhagwan. At the time, our and there will be no distance between our soul and Bhagwan. We can experience even while sleeping, while dreaming, while waking the form of Bhagwan. That is the highest level of become based from, uh, highest level of this bhakti means one soul in different bodies. Despite living in this body, we are also living in the heart of Bhagwan. So this is the Sakha Bhakti. Now let you try from today to understand each and every command of Bhagwan for our benefits. Remember every time whatever Bhagwan, Guruji, Santo ordered me that will always bring me happiness. And just try, try to keep zero percent distance with Bhagwan and Guruji. When we try in this way, then I'm sure one day we will become a best friend of Bhagwan because he is already the best friend of our soul. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ni Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadeveshwaram Bhakti Dhar Matmajam Vasudeva Madhavam Keshavam Kamadam Karanam Swamina Rayanam Nilakantham Bhaje Hare Krishna Maharaj Ni Jai